So hi Brenda, uh, welcome to Net Talk. Thanks. Thank you for taking our time on a Sunday. Okay. Is that part of our industry where we take our time on Sundays and um, walk around? Usually we take out time at seven p.m. with a beer, but yeah, Sundays are good too. Yeah. yeah. So, so talk about your career. What have you been doing? What have you been up to? Um, I've had a wonderful career where I've um, worked mostly with open source, straight straight out of Polytech, and um, been able to contribute and, and meet people in open source. Um, through government stuff, edu um, education, um, through telecommunications, mostly mobile, yeah. and now I'm working in the movie industry and having a lot of fun in, in all of those. So uh, why do you like open source or what attracted you and kept you to open source? Um, the fact that I can talk to anybody that about what I'm building, it's very open, the same is true of government and education, right. that I don't have to know all the answers myself, that I can discuss it with someone on the other side of the world and yeah. learn from it, yeah. and they can learn from me. Yeah. So the, the openness and the transparency of the technology makes it a better technology. How did that come about, you being the face of .geek.nz? I think I registered one of the first .geek.nz right. domains. Um, I've got quite a few, but okay. the one that people remember is coffee.geek.nz, and I couldn't believe it wasn't taken. Right. Um, and I do drink a lot of coffee. So I think I had a blog, and I would blog about technology, yep. um, about stuff that I was building, stuff I didn't understand, um, and, and try and get a discussion going. So I think people uh, remembered the URL because of the geek. Right. Especially people from outside New Zealand, they're like, "What? Dot Geek is a domain? Wow!" Yeah, is that um, a good thing to be a geek? Or I is think so. I think yeah. it, it's been rec we didn't have to reclaim it very far, but it has been reclaimed. Right, it is a good thing amongst most circles. So um, like dot nerd maybe. Right, so yeah. geek is good, nerd is bad. Um, I once defined it as geek is someone who is really, really enthused with what they do and keep doing it when they get home from work. Um, yeah, it could be a ballet geek, a knitting geek. Um, a nerd is more to do with social ineptitude, maybe, maybe not. Okay. <laughs> Though nerd's being reclaimed by the science people, so I should yeah. be careful. Yeah. Yeah. To some extent, there isn't enough diversity in terms of the geek world or even the ICT um, world. Th th there, there are women in the geek, the technology, engineering yeah. and science side of geekdom. There, is, there are quite a lot of women. They often don't get noticed. Right. Um, they get overlooked for leadership. They get overlooked... Um, I was reading an email of um, on the way here, a, a summary of um, recent tech blogs, and I did a count, and there were 12 of them, one was a woman, and there are tons mm. of women blogging about technology. When people think of a list in their mind, that they think of 11 men and one woman, mm. and th there's a blindness there to the women who are there, they're not being noticed. So what can we do about that? How can we encourage women to step forward and... Is it Step one is to notice, I think. Step yeah. one is to actually, when you get a list of yeah. a panel, a conference, speakers, keynoters, yeah. to actually take the time to stop and count. So right. I think step one is awareness that we're only ever inviting men to keynote. I love that um, the Python conference in Australia this year, two out of three of the keynoters are women. Cool. And that's not happened before, and yeah. it was about time. One of your passions is uh, OLPC, or One Laptop Per Child. Yes. Uh, how's that getting ahead? Is it in New Zealand? Is it internationally? Um, well, it's the project isn't really about New Zealand. Um, right. So um, people often ask me this. Um, and the, the project is a project to get a, a low-spec laptop right. into um, schools and one for every child in the world's poorest nations. And New Zealand definitely isn't in the list of the world's poorest nations. Some of the Pacific Islands are, but right. um, New Zealand isn't. So the project itself has been building laptops and shipping to entire countries to every single child, elementary, primary school child, and every single teacher, um, but not to New Zealand. And the project would assist and help New Zealanders who want to do the same here. It's just not something that they would do themselves. So right. the project I'm involved with has been helping build these um, laptops, which we have to keep costs down. So yep. there's a lot of volunteers. The people yeah. who design them are volunteers. Right. People who manufacture them are paid. Sure. The people who write the software are volunteers. And we've shipped to a, a big chunk of South America. A lot of the nations there have shipped these laptops to every single child. They've put the laptop on their postage stamps. Right. It's making a big change That's cool, in but these countries. I guess um, while New Zealand might not be on the list of poorest countries, we do have an issue that... There is a digital divide. Yes. Um, a lot of it is an economic divide. Partly it's a geographical in terms of a rural divide. 
So the OLPC may not, we might not be one of the countries on the list, but surely that's something that we need to address. I think the people who work in the, in the project, the, this, talking about 10 people in this country, yeah. would love to see um, some deployments. There are some going into the Arawera's. There is uh, a deployment in South Auckland. Right. Uh, and as far as uh, wealthy countries, um, Australia, we have, um, there's an official deployment to the Northern Territories. Right. So these things happen. Sure. Um, the the organisation I'm involved with um, will help and assist but won't run it. So right. I would love to see an organisation like Internet NZ right. or even the government in New Zealand get behind a project like this, yep. to starting with the poorest yep. areas, getting a laptop to every yep. kid. Oh, I love copyright. <laughs> the right so, to copy. Yeah. Exactly. So what's your view on, um, you know, come 1 September we're going to have a new law. Mm -hmm. Effectively that's targeting online file sharing. Yes. It's something that many in the online community have been upset with. How do you think that's going to play out? I think um, the law was written, uh, when it passed in Parliament, it was very clear that most of our politicians don't understand how the internet works, let alone copyright. Yep. So we had... Um, one MP calling it the Skynet law and calling the internet Skynet. So we've watched a Terminator movie and thought that's what the internet does, right. and it kills off people. And the law is um, massively flawed. It, it, it comes down to how it will play out when we accu get accusa accusations and whether we'll even hear about the worst injustices mm. that come. It still leaves it um, far too easy to falsely accuse someone and to accuse someone because you just don't want their message out there yeah. or just because you're lazy and have mm. you know, bad techniques for detecting infringement. So a bad technique would be, for example, buying a list of IP addresses and automating sending it to them? Yeah, or forgetting to apply daylight savings to the mm. computer that detects it, which right. is what happened in Ireland when they, they recently... Earlier this year, they had a, a whole lot of people finally had it proven that they were never infringing copyright and that the machine detecting it forgot about daylight savings, so picked the wrong person. And that's because they noticed it and were able to work it out. A lot of people will get these notices, think, oh, my kids must have done it, and, and just pay the fine. And when the kids did nothing of the kind... We had uh, Professor Lawrence Lessig recently, and he spoke quite a bit about... Um, obviously copyright and other things. Mm -hmm. But one of the terms he uses is the code. And I actually never quite understood what he meant by the code because he was talking about how code is law. And what he means by code actually is architecture or aspects of a service. So, for example, the Facebook like button change, which mm -hmm. is effectively a code change, mm -hmm. has such massive social and cultural impact. And that's what he was trying to get at by saying code is the law or code is the practice. So in the Internet side... When you make a change at a code level, mm -hmm. you can actually, and it might just be a feature change, but it can have huge impacts. Yes. I was reading about um, the use of Facebook by protesters in Syria. When someone posts something to Facebook, those that support it click like yeah. and then unclick it immediately. Right. Then the person who posted it gets a message saying it was liked, but it was immediately unliked. So therefore, they know they're supported, right. but the people are too afraid to leave it there. And so Facebook have built this system that allows this. But if Facebook changed their code tonight to make it that it becomes visible who yeah. liked it, or yeah. even a backlog, yeah. suddenly these people's lives are in danger. So yeah. um, privacy and, and respect for the people who are using your system is something that mm. I think people who built this technology need to be far more aware of now. Google have screwed up in a yeah. few ways recently when, when they launched Buzz. Yep. Yeah. Yep. They, they exposed a woman's um, comments in Google Reader yep. to her 10 most emailed people, one of them her abusive ex-husband. Oh, okay. And in her Reader comments were information on where she now lived, mm. um, you know, what band she went to see last week, which right. gave away where she is now. Right. So, yeah, you have, you have to really think before exposing anyone's data. Okay, thank you for that, Brenda. Uh, thank you for coming in. Okay, I, it was wonderful to hear from you. Thank you so much.